Hi there, my name is Sean Stevens, uh, and I'm an entrepreneur. You can tell that, of course, because I'm wearing a suit and I have crazy hair. That's how you tell us apart. Um, my own personal definition of an entrepreneur is usually broke. Uh, that's not really a good a definition of an entrepreneur. In fact, a better definition would be that where most people live their lives inside uh, the frameworks that other people have created, inside other people's canvases, uh, and they're creative within that, they live their lives that way, entrepreneurs tend to think or like to think outside of the box. time we got. <laughs> as much time as you need. Uh, my upbringing or my, which, which one? I guess you can start with your upbringing and then maybe that can funnel into what you want to do when it's a music. I wanted to be a musician when I grew up uh, and I went and did a whole bunch of different degrees and different things and finally went, the thing that I want to be is write music and help people through writing music. And uh, I found that it's really difficult to make money making music. I never really figured out how to make those two things work. I use uh, Ableton. Ableton. Actually, Mark of the Unicorn on, for one place and Ableton another. But GarageBand's funnier. Is it even on this computer? <laughs> like, what dissonance if everyone's like, he uses GarageBand to build everything. That's just like too awesome. <laughs> Say this more. Pretend like I actually record in here. December. It's coming earlier Every year, every year I'm happiest in December When my baby's here, when my baby's here December is coming earlier Every year, every year Happiest in December when my baby's here. Did I tell you that I'm the luckiest man alive? Like, I really am. Uh, my name is Sean Stevens, and uh, I, I think uh, last time I checked my underwear, that's what it said. So we'll continue going with that name for the time being, at least. My name is Danny Vogler. I work at TreeFrog, the director of sales and marketing, and Sean Stevens is my boss. He doesn't like that word though, so Sean Stevens is more of my mentor, my god, my bro. TreeFrog, where we're sitting, is a digital transformation agency. So the digital transformation agency is we help companies become successful, and in doing so, we become successful ourselves. Now I have this little company called TreeFrog. And uh, people come to me all the time, and they say, this, you've got such an innovative company, it's amazing. And uh, I like this because they're all these innovation artifacts, I call them. So you go in and you see all my crazy people, I call them the frogs. And uh, you, you'll see that there's all these cool spaces in my business. There's, you can, there's rooms that you can do meetings in, and glass rooms, and open areas, and training rooms, and there's skateboards that everybody are riding everywhere. And the walls are covered in paint that you can write on, so anyone has a good idea, they can just write them down. And of course, there's desks that go up and down, you can move around so everybody's comfortable. And of course, there's, we bring in trainers from all over the world to teach us stuff every week. We're constantly learning, constantly learning. And of course, we have theater events and poetry readings, and we have uh, uh, robotics clubs, and we have a room that you can do YouTubes in. We have a nap room in case you get tired. We've got an electric car you can borrow in case you need to go somewhere during the day. And we've got a beer tap. Welcome to Tree Frog. Uh, we've got some cool events always happening here. Um, some people rent the space. Not too sure what's going on in here, but this is pretty cool. 
one thing Sean did immediately when he moved in here, not so immediately, but built a dance floor. Got to have a dance floor in every digital agency office. That's a, that's a must have. And this is our studio where I unofficially call my office, but it is a shared room for all employees who would like to partake uh, if I'm not in here. A couple of friends of mine, we started Tree Frog, and the idea was that I could play music till three o'clock in the morning, wake up late and still have a job. And kind of, sort of, we ran this business for a number of years. I was sort of the guy that led Tree Frog, uh, sort of became that guy. And then one day, a business mentor of mine, he was like, dude, you gotta stop calling yourself, you know, a founder and stuff. You gotta own the idea of being a CEO, own what it is to be a CEO, like get into it. And so then I'm like, I'm all in, I wanna be a CEO. So then I, you know, read every book, did everything I could, got a degree in business or a diploma in business, did everything I possibly could to get better at being a CEO. You want a great life hack? I want you to imagine that you're sitting at a giant round table. One afternoon, came in, into my office, opened the door and said, hey Dan, are you, are you busy this afternoon? I'm like, of course I'm busy, Sean, you hired me. I have a job to do. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, 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 no, don't worry about that. Um, grab your phone, let's grab the camera gear and, and make some videos. TikToks. So I have to admit, I wasn't like, didn't wake up one morning and be like, I want to post TikToks. Like, that really wasn't where it started. And uh, so I, I was like, I got to figure out a way to get the music that I write in front of you. You're so beautiful, don't you say. Writing music to me, is, is kind of like this weird guy that walks around collecting things in jars. And then when he gets a jar that's full, puts it up on a shelf and is like, hey, ever come look at my jar of strange things? It's just that instead of things, it's emotions, it's ideas, it's concepts. So I'm walking around my life with all these like jars filled with hot filled jars with concepts. And then once they get to almost complete, I put a lid on them, I give it to a producer and they make a song out of it. Does that make sense? So I don't really have a central message yet. I tend to just talk about things like I there really isn't a single song that I've explicitly written about one person although that does happen there's the odd person's name in my songs but even then it's usually just like a series of all the things that have happened to me in my life and I put them all in a jar and then I get that jar out and then I force everybody to look at my weird jars of stuff so I don't, this makes me feel like a creepy old man all of a sudden with like weird jars of urine everywhere, but that, it's, it's, it's way cooler than that, I promise. So even if you don't like my songs, this incredibly cute dog loves my songs. So how could that be wrong? And so I went up to YouTube and I started watching YouTubes and I bumped across this guy named Damien Keys. He started mentoring me in how to do things. And one of those things was TikTok. And now I'm like, okay, let's do some TikToks. And so I did like hundreds of TikToks and every single one is like, crap, crap, crap. He's like, you're terrible at this. Uh, he said, let's go to New York. So I went to New York and he's just like, say it like this. No, Sean, you don't know it. Say it like this. No, say it like this. I traveled a thousand kilometers to New York City to do this. I am rectangular. Feel it in my bones, I am rectangular. I feel no hole, I am rectangular. And you are a circle, I am rectangular. So, I already knew I'm famous, just that I just figured nobody else knew. No, I'm kidding. I am rectangular. So that's an interesting song. Uh, I mean, the, the meaning behind it's fairly straightforward. I was actually on TikTok, flicking through TikTok, and I came across this comedian. I, I have to admit, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, and she's watching somebody put blocks into one of those kid games. And it's like, she goes to put in a circle or goes to put in a square and it's the wrong one. And she is watching in horror as this person puts all the same shapes into the same hole. And I'm like, this is how I feel some days. I wake up and I realize that like, I'm living life completely differently than everybody else is. And uh, you know, I've not successfully found a partner for myself, and uh, so I've been married a few times and unsuccessfully. 
uh, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, I'm like the only shape version of myself and can't find another person like me. And so I'm like, th that, that TikTok inspired me to go write a song about being rectangular as the guy who is rectangular and everybody else is a different shape. And it turns out that everybody feels that way. Right? So that's the virality of it, where it kind of went crazy. Not everybody feels that way. Actually, a lot of people really don't feel that way. And so they're super angry about that thought. And they think that, I don't know, it's, it's, so it's, it's been fun. And I, it's like the simplest song I've ever written. It's like a child's tune. So, you know, somebody's been writing music for years and years and years, all this complex key signatures and all this stuff. And then I write this like, boring song in a way like it's four chords it's maybe three chords like there's nothing to it it's just really funny that that one was the one so the tiktok happens all these comments are like you're fake you're ai you're fake you're ai and then the phone starts ringing tree frog thanks for calling tree frog how can i help you and they'll say oh oh so sorry so sorry like uh what They're like we uh we didn't think you were real. We thought Sean was fake and this whole business was a, was a fake ploy. The fact is, you get this like arbitrary hate comment. How could that possibly affect you as a human being? And, and you know what, at the beginning it did, and I'm like laughing, like wh why would I care what some random person on the internet says? And the fact is, I have uh, amazing people around me. I told you I'm the luckiest man alive. I have amazing kids, like the, the best kids in the whole world. I have amazing friends. I have amazing people that I work with. I, like, I've just been blessed by being around all these amazing people. And for the most part, they all have positive attitudes of me. Sean's a celebrity, I love him. Like my DMs are filled mostly, at the early days especially, with people who are like, I don't want to say this out loud, but I love your music, this is great. Aww. So that's that's actually part of the, the love that I get. So you guys can't see that, I can. So yeah. I, you guys just see the hate. And people are afraid to like me kind of idea, so I, whatever. Yeah, my relationship with Sean is, uh, is family, uh, no doubt. Uh, not by blood, but in our heart. Everybody here at Tree Frog is we're family from the moment you walk in the door. The team here at Tree Frog have been super supportive. Like everybody's hilariously watching because they all knew me really well before any of this started to happen. So I have all these people that kind of know me and know that I'm not an ass and can could continue on life as usual. And the, and the most likely thing to happen is that in like five minutes, everyone will have forgotten me and we'll just life will go back to normal. So that, that'll be cool. And if not, then hey, we're all along for a ride. That'll be fun too, as it comes. Life's kind of a ride. You just kind of jump on and you can, you can choose for it to suck and, and sort of complain about all the weather, or you can just accept the fact it rains in everybody's life. So accept the fact that life is hard and do harder things, do awesome things. And, Suddenly, you're moving forward. He does. He does fun things. You know, one time he uh, he did an April Fool's joke, a uh, little over the top, I'd say. He he uh, he got married <laughs> as a joke, and we didn't just do like a posting on Facebook. It was like hire the photographers, get the kids dressed up, get the fake wife that he hired some actor or friend for, and he set up a whole thing on Main Street to the point where like neighbors and stuff are coming out and be like, oh, Sean, congratulations, you know? He's got the kisses, he's got the kids in there with the pictures, all the photography. It got to the point where even ex-employees were messaging him, congratulating him for getting married. And I won't forget that day because I absolutely messaged him and said, Sean, congrats, man. I know, I know you'd get, you know you'd find someone and you did it, man, congrats. And he wouldn't let up. He wouldn't, yeah, thanks, man, appreciate it. Right? He would not let up. He'd let that go for as long as possibly a week, two weeks later, starting to feel that something's off because I haven't seen his wife yet. And yeah, that's a day at Tree Frog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and here's the interesting thing is uh, a couple of years ago, I went through this, this period where I made some really bad decisions as a CEO. And uh, and I was trying to be a little too innovative, and I spent more money than I should have on a couple of things that were really neat, but they didn't make any money. And I reached a point where actually I ran out of money. The company ran out of money, and uh, we weren't going to be able to continue. And so I did all the math, and I realized I'm going to have to do something. And I pulled everybody together into a room, and I said, look, I, I know this is completely against what I've been saying, but I'm going to have to fire one out of every five of you 
because we just don't have the money to do it. And so the people actually got together and, and they came back to me and they said, you know what? We are going to volunteer as a company, everybody in the whole company, to take a 20% pay cut so that we can all stay. And some other people said, you know what? I've been working here for a long time and I have money. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my check in a drawer because, and, and you, I'll just cash it when you, the company gets back up on its feet. And some other people said, you know, we don't want to harm the other people we're working with. We want to make sure they're okay. So they went out and paid the company's bills for us. Five weeks later, everybody returned to, five, to full salary. And a year later, everything was back to normal. Everybody had been paid back. And nobody lost their job. My family had a farm. I was born in Canada, in, in North York. Uh, and uh, the farm in the 80s went bankrupt. And so my parents, which, which happened to most little farmers that were sort of running little farms, or many. And so my family didn't really know what to do with themselves. And we ended up becoming missionaries in the Angolan Civil War. So we went the opposite way that most people go. We went into war as opposed to out of war. Uh, and then we spent a bunch of years in Angola, came back for a while, we, we sort of ended up in Portugal for a while, then Brazil, and then ended up in Zimbabwe, uh, and then Zimbabwe for a while, and then after Zimbabwe. So we ended up traveling all over the place, whole, whole point, mostly sub-Saharan Africa. Here he is, Sean Evans, Mr. Rectangular himself. Well, how are you doing? I'm sorry, Sean Stevens. How are you today? Thanks for calling in. I am rectangular. I feel no hope. So I built a business, Tree Frog, which is a company that I want to work at, and I want to genuinely work there for the rest of my life, and I hope that the people that I'm working with are there too for the rest of their lives. And I genuinely have this idea of lasting for a hundred years, maybe even a thousand. And I'm not suggesting that we should burn all of the ideas that exist and all the frameworks to the ground. It's, this is not about rebellion. It's about rethinking. It's about working better. It's about saying, does that framework that is there, does it make sense anymore? We don't have to throw it out, but is there another way we could do it? I think together with this group, we could rethink all of those frameworks and we'd have a better world. Thank you very much. Classic beanbag chair, right? You got to take a sleep. You're tired. You're, t you're working all day. I don't have time for this. So you just you just go for a nap, right? Got to have comfy comfy spaces. Are you saying I feel you or I fill you? Well, depends on you know which way you swing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm staring at you because I know that's the right thing to do. Yeah, no, you're. <laughs> Thank you.